Hello, welcome to yet another p5.speech video. In this one, we're going to talk about the obvious next step from output, which is input, uh, which is to say that we're going to talk a bit about speech recognition within p5.speech. It has a pretty simple implementation of this idea, but because speech itself is such a, a powerful concept, uh, and so part of life itself, uh, I think this can be a jumping board to really interesting work that leverages the fact of speech and the, the effect of speech, uh, what speech means to us uh, and how we use it. So with that in mind, let's get underway and have a look at how it works in p5.speech specifically. So as we will tend to do or should tend to do, we want to get set up for our simple exploration of what's possible so that we don't get distracted by accomplishing, trying to accomplish too many uh, well-developed ideas in favor of just seeing what the basic setup can do. And as per usual to do that, I'm going to be here in P5 in a template. Uh, and I've already made sure that in my index.html, I am linking to the P5 speech library. Crucial. And then I need to, well, put in the basic stuff. So what is the basic stuff when it comes to the recognition side uh, of p5.speech? Let's go have a look at their website. Uh, and they do have a very, very, you know, reduced version of it here. Uh, and we can see that there are really four major things, I suppose. One is we've, just as we had to do with synthesis, we've got to make an object that does the speech recognition. That is a speech rec object. So we've got to have a variable or a constant with that in it, definitely not called foo. We need to tell that object what function it should call if it hears something. That's what show result does. Uh, then we actually need to start it because it uses the microphone. It has to ask permission. Uh, to actually work in the first place. And then we actually have to have the function itself that gets called when some speech has been detected. So those are the four pieces of our puzzle. Uh, I want to go ahead and put those in place. And first of all, just make sure that we can get anything working, since that is by no, <laughs> by no means a guaranteed thing, as you know from your own experience with programming. So I'm going to use a constant here. I think that that's appropriate because I'm not going to change the speech recognition object. And I'm going to call it speech recognizer. Again, it's a long variable name, uh, but I think it's long in that it explains what I'm doing. And I think that that is a good thing. And I know, I know from the, the website I need to create a speech rec object like that. I could continue to do the setup here, or I can do the setup in setup. I'm going to do the setup in setup because it's called setup, and that's for setup. Uh, first, I'm going to create a canvas just because I think we might want to display something at some point. And I'm going to set a background color of whatever that color is. Uh, and then I need to do those basic setup things, right? So I know that I need to say speech recognizer uh, dot on result. So I need to tell it the thing that it's going to do when it hears me say something. And I'm going to call that handle speech input. I have to make that function in a second, but I can just imagine it into existence for now. So that's what it's going to call when it hears something. And I need to tell it to begin actually listening, speech recognizer dot start. Uh, that's the thing that will ask for permission. And then finally, as promised, handle speech input is going to have to be called. And in here, we have to actually do something uh, with our results. We saw from the website that the, the easiest thing to do is just to print out what it is uh, that got heard. Uh, they were doing that in a console.log. Uh, but maybe what we can do here is display it on our canvas, just so that it's, um, it's a bit more visible. So we could say we'll make a variable called current speech. And I'll start it just as a question mark, because it's not, uh, not going to be anything there. And then I'll display that current speech here uh, with a text command. Uh, so current speech, and I'll put it at... Uh, well, actually, you know what? I'll center it. So width over 2, height over 2. And uh, because I'm doing that, I'm going to also set the text align to center, center. 
And to wire this up, I need to make sure that current speech is whatever got heard. So here, I need to say current speech is assigned speech recognizer dot result string. That's where it stores something if it heard something. This is the function that gets called if it heard something. So at least in theory, and believe me, it is theory because not everything works every time. This will contain the thing that it hears me saying or hears you saying, and it will go here into current speech, which will then be displayed on the canvas because of this marvelous little function over here. Maybe I should make it a little bit bigger as well, just so we can read it. Okay, that should be good enough for the basic, um, the very, very basic test bed. Uh, I should be able to now run this, say something, have it call this function, and therefore it should put the thing that I said into current speech. Uh, because that's what's in speech recognizer.result string, and it should display that here in the draw loop. And that way we'll have the basic loop of I say something and I see it appear. So let's check that out. Silence is golden. Okay, well, that totally worked. I heard what I said, it displayed it on the canvas. The circle is complete, and silence is golden. Uh, but not in this case, because this is entirely about talking. So we've got the beginning point of, of what we need, right? Like we've got it wired up, we can see that it can hear us. So one immediate question is going to be, well, what can we do with that? And I think these are some interesting things um, to think about. Uh, one of them, as I was saying, is just that because you're using your voice, it's, it's a physical thing that you're doing. And when you're doing something physical, you're involving all of these different aspects of what it is to be a person, right? Um, you're using your body, you're filling a space in a particular way, other people can hear you, uh, you can say things in different ways, uh, your voice can operate differently. Uh, and along with that, what you actually say matters, you know, the words that you say, <laughs> we're getting back to basics here, but they have a meaning. And they can have emotional content, they can be um, orders, or they can be requests, or they can be declarations of love, or hate, or mild interest. Uh, the things that you say are inherently going to feel different, uh, different to the things that you might type in, for example, or a button that you might click, right? There's just a whole other level of stuff going on. And I think that thinking about those aspects of speech, what it means to say words out loud, and also what it means to, to have a computer listen to and kind of hear them in some sense, these are the things that we can use to kind of jump off into interesting creative projects um, around speech recognition. So what are the possibilities here? So the first question then is a big one, right? What does it actually hear? Uh, because it's tempting, at least initially, to be like, well, it just hears whatever I say. Uh, and that's going to be true some of the time, uh, but it's probably not always going to be quite so accurate. So if I reload the page to get it to listen to me again, because by default it only listens to you once, <laughs> which is an interesting relationship uh, all on its own. She sells seashells by the seashore. Oh, well, that was pretty impressive. I'm mildly surprised that it was able to, to pick up on that, but it did. Wonderful. So it's pretty excellent uh, speech recognition, we could say. Uh, what if I didn't speak in English? Bonjour, comment ça va? Okay, well, it struggled with that. It knows the word bonjour uh, in you know, like my version of pronunciation of French. Does not know what comment ça va uh, is in this context. It says como. I don't know. I honestly didn't know that como was a word in English. Uh, and ça va. I did not know that either. There are... Um, capitalized, which makes me think that they're possibly either a proper noun, like a place or something, or even like, could this be Esperanto <laughs> or something like that? I don't know what como sava is. This is a thing for us all to investigate later on. Uh, the point being, though, that you can say things that it doesn't understand because it doesn't understand anything, right? It's just trying to pull out the sounds that you're making and put them into... Um, into words in the language that it's trying to recognize. So one thing we might do is go back here to the reference and try and find out how it might understand me speaking um, in French. So if, is there somewhere that I can set that? Looks like it would be here in the constructor, actually. 
So we could set the default BCP-47 language region for the speech recognition. Um, that's interesting. It's also saying it will only work unless we're using HTTPS. Um, but that's not actually seeming to be true to me. So I don't entirely know how I would specify that I would like it to listen to me in French. It's interesting that it's not just given to me, but it looks like we need to put a string in here. Um, and I want to be able to specify French. So let's look up this thing, BCP47 uh, codes, I guess. Let's have a look at that. Okay. So that looks pretty useful. Let's, uh, let's, let's took, look for French in here. French is FR dash. Oh, we can use uh, Canadian French or uh, French French. Uh, my accent is probably more French French, so I'm going to go FR dash big FR and see if telling it that I'm going to speak in French helps it to recognize my version of French. Let's check that out. Bonjour, comment ça va? Aha, now it's listening to me in French, right? Now it knows what language I'm speaking and it's able to do whatever on earth it is that these things do. Presumably machine learning is involved. Uh, so if I want to speak in French to it, I need to tell it that I'm going to speak in French ahead of time. You can imagine doing that to be helpful. You can also imagine setting the language to the wrong language for the, what you tell the user to speak and having some fun around their, <laughs> their extreme confusion about why it keeps hearing them speaking uh, in a different language. I think there's some potential sort of nonsensey stuff that you could do there. I'm going to return to, um, to English, um, which is the default, for better or worse. Uh, one other thing that we could do is like we could speak in complete nonsense, I assume, and see what it hears. Not actually as bad as you would think. I did say something a bit like that, boogly boogly new moon. Uh, so you could play around with that and your voice and see what it, um, you know, what the kind of the range of tolerances of this language hearing thing uh, actually are. Um, you could also imagine doing something around having the computer pretend that it doesn't understand you. Um, that would be kind of potentially interesting. Um, you can just use the mere fact of the microphone being on, uh, for that matter, to imply things that may not be true about your program. Um, and you can also, of course, ask people to, to say things that are uh, potentially more or less you know, easy for them to, to, to say. So for instance, we could also include in here an instruction. Uh, say that you love me, like that. And I'll move it up a little bit higher uh, so that we can see it. I love you. Okay, well, that was successful. I did say that, but, you know, it feels a little bit different to say, I love you to the computer uh, than <laughs> it did to say, boogly boogly new moon, uh, for instance. So you can imagine asking people to say things um, in a, like a broad range of possibilities there, right? Uh, what you ask somebody to say has a huge impact on how they feel about that interaction. Um, there's also something going on here about power dynamics, right? Now it's the computer is telling me what to say uh, rather than the usual idea that I tell the computer what to do uh, and it responds. Now this is kind of the other way around. Flipping that dynamic, I think, is, is often a really interesting sort of thing um, that you can do. So... That is really, I mean, to, to some extent, that is a jumping off point for a lot of this sort of thing. One thing that I, I, I obviously we're going to want to do is it doesn't right, really know that I said the right thing here. So if, if, for example, it wanted to force me to say I love you or to check if I said uh, I love you, this wouldn't work. So how would we do that? We'd have to do something in here when it hears the speech that checks whether they said uh, the right thing. So we could imagine um, something like this, right? So if uh, speech recognizer, which is the, the thing that's doing all of this dot result string, which is the thing um, that's, that's listening, is the same thing as I love you, i.e. 
if what they said is I love you, then we could set current speech uh, to, to something else, just to display something. Uh, you're damn right you do. Uh, and then if they didn't say that, um, I don't know what they should respond in this particular instance. We're getting into design, which I'm trying to avoid. Uh, maybe a sad face. I don't know what the dynamics of that are. I love you. There you go, right? It responded to the specific thing that I said. But I don't love you. And it's sad. Uh, obviously, there are problems uh, associated with this, like... I really, really love you. It's really specifically listening to me saying only the words I love you. So if I say anything that expresses that same sentiment, um, but in different words, it's not going to recognize what I said. So you have to tread lightly around that kind of thing, find workarounds, have ideas around what that means. But this is part of the kind of the brittleness and rigidity of how computers work as well, right? Uh, one thing that we might want to do is have a whole bunch of things that you could say. I think we'll be better off doing that in an example uh, rather than right now. But you can see that there's a, there's a more general case, which is that you have a series of kinds of commands that you could say that, that affect things in the program. Uh, just for instance, uh, you could imagine asking the computer to turn the, the lights on. So what if uh, when we begin, it's, it's, uh, it's black, and we could have a variable called lights are on, that starts off as false. And then, um, we don't really need this text stuff anymore. We could say, if lights are on, then we'll set the background to white. And how will we know whether the lights are on? Well, we'll do it in here, right? Um, we'll check if they said, turn the lights on. And if they did, then we're going to set lights on to true. We might run into a problem here, and so one of the things I'm going to do on spec here is also just print out what it hears. Because one of the things you're going to find, uh, I'm just doing this in advance because I know this, is that what it hears is it's really important that you get it exactly right. Uh, because, for instance, the phrase turn the lights on with a capital T is not the same thing to a computer as turn the lights on with a small t. Let's, uh, let's check this out. I'm going to need the console now. Turn the lights on. So you go, it, there you go, it heard with a small t. This is a weird concept, right? Because this is, not, this is not how we hear things, but this is how a computer hears things. It heard the small t. Uh, what do we want to do about that? The safest thing that we can actually do is always use lowercase, or always use uppercase. Uh, and always, before we check things, sorry, to lowercase, convert what is being heard into lowercase. So whatever it hears here, speech recognizer dot result string, we're going to change it so every letter is lowercase. So even if there was a big T or not a big T, uh, it would all end up being all lowercase. And that way, when we compare it to something that's all lowercase, we avoid some of the problems that might come up, um, like capit the capitalization of I, for example. So now it should, uh, should do what we want. Turn the lights on. <laughs> Uh, well, there you go. I managed to trigger a, a syntax error with my voice, which is, you know, not what I wanted, but in a sense is an amazing superpower. Uh, I guess the issue here is that it's called lights are on, and I'm using lights on. So lights are on. Turn the lights on. And well, there we go, we turned the lights on. Uh, that is an incredibly minimalistic example, but the point here is that also what you trigger with your voice is important, right? The kinds of things that happen when you speak have a special significance because it's your voice. Uh, it's a modality that you're not used to. When you ask for things to happen or find things happening because of your voice, it feels different uh, from clicking on a button or typing in a letter um, or something like that, right? So these are the key um, ideas, I think, that we need to be aware of. There's just one thing that I want to, to comment on uh, or just have a quick look at as well which is right now the program that we're doing, the program that we're using here, uh, is only listening to us one time. Uh, and then it's turning off speech recognition altogether. It's quite possible that you want to write a program that only listens to the user once. There is something funny about that. But it's pretty likely that we're also going to want to keep listening. 
uh, for all that that is a huge ethical problem, right? And that's the job of this thing here, continuous. Uh, continuous is going to um, let us keep listening all the time, and each time something gets said, our function is going to get called. So we can improve on this program a bit um, at the expense of our ethics <laughs> by setting continuous to true. That means the handle speech input will be called every time it hears something. Uh, and for that reason, we probably want to add another case um, where we check if it's turned the lights off. Like that, right? So now it's going to listen to us. If we say turn the lights on, then we're going to say lights are on is true. And if we hear turn the lights off, lights are on is going to be false. So now we can do two different things and we can keep doing it indefinitely. Turn the lights on. Turn the lights off. Turn the lights on. Turn the lights off. Turn the lights on. Turn the lights off. Turn the lights on. Interesting too that it can hear whatever that was. Not singing, but you know, like a different way of speaking. Uh, it's interesting. Can it understand terrible Scottish accents? Turn the lights off. <laughs> Turn the lights off. Oh, it did. There you go. So you can get into that if you want to. I'm not sure that I should have, but it's intriguing as well to think about like, what's the range at which it still understands people speaking? Um, you can also see in the, in the console here, it's basically taking dictation of everything that I'm saying, uh, for better or worse. It's waiting until I pause before actually printing it out. Um, so there is that to take account of as well. You can, as you can see, it can hear quite large amounts of information before you, before you pause. Um, so there's a lot to think about uh, in terms of these capacities. This is one mode of interacting, right? Is that every time you say something and then pause, it calls the function and does something. Um, the other mode that you can look at if you want to is this one with interim results. And what that means is it's gonna continuously call the function as it hears stuff. Um, so let's look at what that looks like as well. So I'm gonna get rid of this for now just so that we can just watch it. Um, so speech recognizer.interim results is now true. It's normally false. Hello, my name is Jeff. I am not actually called Jeff. I'm called Pippin, uh, but that's okay. You know, it's just, uh, it's just what I'm doing today. So what's interesting about that, right, is you can see it building up these little mini bits of what I'm saying. You can see that it's not always building up the total thing that I'm saying, rather it's building up these kind of chunks. I really don't understand how it's working. And then when I eventually pause, it's gonna spit out the whole thing. Like that. Uh, that's potentially interesting if you want something really dynamic. So what if we, every time we heard um, something that's a color, we set the, the background color to that. Let's try that. This, this will be the last thing I think that we, that we need to try and do. Um, so let's go background color. Uh, we'll start it out as black. This is going to take advantage of the fact that we can use uh, words as background colors. Background color here. We don't need the lights are on anymore. And what we're going to do is, well, our first approximation is let's just set the background color to whatever the person just said. Uh, speech recognizer dot uh, result string. This is not necessarily going to work perfectly, but it um, might do something. Red, green, blue, turquoise, cyan, chinchilla, grupalback, hanging at Mingmong, rouge, black. Beige. Yeah, there's quite a few colors in there. And you could also be talking about something and you're like, I read this book the other day. Oh, that doesn't get it though. The color red. That kind of works. Uh, you can see that it's because I'm setting it consistently to whatever they say, uh, there's, there's something of a problem. I would have to just expect somebody to talk in colors if I want this to work really properly. Um, I'd also have to think about whether it always nails down the the color word. Um, 
And one way to do that is to make sure that I'm only looking at the final word uh, in the result string. So to do that, we can do this thing called split. Um, so we can split what they said into the separate words. So we can say speech recognizer uh, dot result string, which is the full string of what they currently said dot split. And we can split on the space. So basically what we're saying is give us chop this thing into pieces based on where the spaces are. And what we'll end up with is an array of the words uh, in the currently detected speech. And then if we always used the final word in there, we could just grab words, uh, goodness me, pop, I think, right, is to get the final thing. Uh, so that's taking the last thing in the array and spitting it out into background color. I like red, I like green, these things are blue, Etc. So that's kind of working. Uh, but again, we're still going to run into this thing where if I say the word the, for example, that's not a valid color representation. And so uh, we end up with uh, just white, which is the default that happens. So we'd have to solve that problem as well if we were wanting to get more sophisticated about this. There's a lot more that we can do in terms of just how we process uh, the string that gets spit out. But the thing that matters most, I think, is just checking it often checking it against what you wanted to hear or what you're looking for to hear and responding to it, right? That's really the big thing uh, that we're looking to, to respond, respond to in this kind of coding uh, experience. So yeah, what is it here? Uh, well, we can see that it hears our speech. It has some interesting relationships to what language you're speaking, potentially what accent you, um, you have when you're speaking to it. Uh, but it's surprisingly and uh, impressively accurate. And how could it react, right? Um, what could it do based on what you say? And I guess the other thing is like, what could you say? Like, what can you ask the user to say? Uh, in some ways, that's one of the more powerful things, right? Because it's so personal uh, how you use your voice. Uh, so what's next? Uh, it's time to do some more experimenting with this stuff uh, yourself if you would like to. And it's time also very much to start thinking, well, what can I do with this stuff? Where can I take this? What's exciting about this to me? Is it more about the output or the input? Is it both? Can I think about ways to use them in conjunction? Can I make the computer talk to itself? Uh, yes, you can. And that's kind of potentially interesting too. Uh, how can this fit into an interesting experience that both you know, uses the best of the things that I'm already interested in, the kinds of explorations I like doing uh, with digital projects, with programming uh, at their heart. Uh, but also, how can, I, how can I react to these possibilities and go in new design directions uh, based on the possibilities of speech synthesis and now uh, speech recognition as well? So I hope that you, you have some fun with this. I think it's really, really entertaining uh, and, and weird and just, frankly, quite a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to, to hopefully seeing what you do and, and working on it with you. And that's it for now. Bye-bye.